The end of Six Flags Great Adventures off-season is just around the corner. The safari opens on March 19th, and Great Adventure itself opens on April 2nd. Before the 2022 season begins though, let's take a look back at the 2021 season and all of the awesome events that happened throughout the season. It is safe to say that 2021 was probably the wildest season at Great Adventure, with so many ups and downs and just awesome things happening at the park. I'm Colin from Hollywood Studios, and today we're going to take a look back at the 2021 season at Six Flags Great Adventure. We start with March 27th and 28th, which of course was the park's opening weekend. Unfortunately, El Toro was not open for opening weekend or the week after it, as they had some extended maintenance to do from the off-season, but all the other great rides were open, and the opening weekend overall was really good, especially that Sunday, because it was absolutely dead at the park. All the rides were open, and we were able to get in a ton of rides, which was a really, really great day at the park. Thankfully, not long after opening day, Toro did open, and it was running absolutely insane this year. For the time that it was open, especially during coaster power hours, which is another great thing that happened during, at the park during the 2021 season, El Toro was absolutely nuts. I don't think it has ever ran faster, at least in the time I've ridden it. Coaster power hours was held from April to May, and wow, it is by far one of the greatest things the park has ever done. In my opinion, the best time to visit the park is spring. It is my personal favorite time to visit the park. And this just added even more days and hours to the spring season. And not only was it more time to be at the park, it was also really dead at the park, meaning that there was barely any lines, barely any people. It was awesome. Really, really just some of the best times to be at the park. Along with this, Zumanjaro was able to run simultaneously with King Dika around this time after they changed some of the cages on Zumanjaro, which is awesome because when you get a full duel on Zumanjaro with King Dika, it is one of the craziest drop towers, one of the craziest ride experiences, period. So, so cool. Around this time, the mask requirement at the park was also dropped, which was held in place from the last year in 2020, of course. And also around this time, Jersey Devil's construction was really ramping up, especially with the first test run, which we were lucky enough to catch on video and post to YouTube, which I'm sure is how many of you were introduced to this channel, so thank you for sticking with me if you're still here. But construction for Jersey Devil was going absolutely crazy at this time. They were going testing like mad, and there was a lot being done to the area like pavement, landscaping, among other things, and that of course led to Jersey Devil's opening. Previews began on Wednesday, June 9th, Media Day was on Thursday, June 10th, and previews ran until Sunday, June 13th, which was the ride's official opening. I was lucky enough to go on Wednesday for previews, on Thursday for Media Day, and on Saturday for some more previews. The opening day on Wednesday, I remember absolutely booking it to Jersey Devil. The energy at the park that day was absolutely great because everyone either took off work, took off school, just to get to ride the brand new coaster. I wound up being the first public rider in the front row and it was absolutely awesome. It definitely warmed up throughout the day and got better and better with more rides. And that only continued into the next day on media day, which is by far one of the best days I've ever had at the park, which is pretty crazy considering almost my entire stay at the park was spent at Jersey Devil. But I was able to get a total of 32 rides on Jersey Devil that day, met a ton of awesome people, even got featured in Inside Edition's video on the ride. It was just so cool, and I can't thank the park enough for having us out there to media day. But Following Media Day was the summer season, which personally I was not able to visit all that often because we had a lot of trips throughout the summer and we just didn't really have much time for Great Adventure, but that was fine considering we had been there a ton of times during the spring season, largely thanks to Coaster Power Hours, which I'm very happy to see is coming back this year. But during the summer, there were a couple of unfortunate things that happened at the park. For one, Log Flume had a little incident where it rose up on the rail and it was closed for a little while while they made some repairs, but it did wind up reopening later this summer. El Toro, as I'm sure many of you know, had a slight derailment, if you can really call it that. It was more of like a misalignment, but that shut down Toro for the rest of the year. And Jersey Devil was also down for quite a bit of time because RMC was doing some adjustments, largely due to the fact that Stump Pilot was having some issues. They just wanted to make sure that Jersey Devil wouldn't have the same issues, which thankfully it did not. So 
The summer was kind of interesting considering there really wasn't much going on. There was some construction going on on Little Devil, which was announced during the summer as the park's 14th coaster. For those of you who don't know, Jersey Devil took over the plot of Looney Tunes Seaport, which is where their old Roadrunner Railway kitty coaster was, and they were pretty much rebuilding it, repainting it, and retheming it in a slightly different area as Little Devil, which I thought was so cool, especially because we had thought of that idea a while back when Jersey Devil was first announced, and it was cool to see an idea of ours come to life. Of course, one of the highlights of the year was Thrillathon, the first week of September, that is by far one of the greatest, if not the greatest, coaster event I think I have ever been to. The park did an absolutely fantastic job running the event, and it was really great to see that there really weren't that many people there, which allowed for the ERTs to be absolutely nuts. But I'm sure that after the success of Thrillathon last year, there's probably going to be a whole lot more people there this year, and I'm excited to see everyone there this year. But the three raffles were absolutely great. We wound up winning Toro Track and a piece of King Dakar's Cable. The ERTs were great with Jersey Devil in the morning along with Nitro and Batman, Dark Knight, Wonder Woman, and Justice League at night. And of course, the tour in the middle of the day, which consisted of Nitro, Batman, and Jersey Devil, was absolutely awesome to get some great views of those rides. And yeah, that was by far one of the best, most memorable days I think I've ever had at the park. That, of course, led right into one of the park's most crowded, most popular seasons, which is Fright Fest. We went a ton during Fright Fest, largely thanks to Fright Fest Power Hours, which was a revived version of Coaster Power Hours that was taking place during the fall. Not only were all the coasters opened, flat rides were opened, and every maze was opened. And let me talk about the mazes, because there were a couple new ones that were really, really cool. More specifically, Expedition Dino Survival. I did not mention, but during the summer season, Expedition Dino was introduced, which pretty much took over a small piece of land where the Safari's trucks used to go through while it was drive through because yes, the Safari was drive through for the 2021 season, and they had a whole bunch of dinosaur animatronics similar to Dinosaurs Alive at the Cedar Fair Parks, but this was a lot cooler for the fact that all the dinosaurs were big, they worked, they made sounds, it was so cool. And they adapted that upcharge into a Fright Fest maze and put some really cool lights and fog back there. And just walking through there, getting scared was so, so cool. One of the highlights of Fright Fest this season. And of course, Fright Fest Power Hours was very similar to Coaster Power Hours for the fact that there was no one there. You could get on a ton of rides as many times as you want. It was so much fun. On one of the Fright Fest Power Hour days, Little Devil actually wound up opening out of nowhere. So we were able to, I guess, get the f one of the first rides on Little Devil on its opening day, which was really cool and unexpected. Then came the bonus days, which were your last days to get your rides in on King Dika, Zoom and Jar, which unfortunately was closed at this time, Bizarro, and Runaway Mine Train. I wound up hitting my 100th ride for the season on King Dika, which was really cool. And while we were there, we also spotted some new paint on Bizarro, which still has yet to be announced, but I'm sure it's going to be some sort of new theme. It has bright green track and yellowish orange supports. It's really cool to see Bizarro getting revived because it definitely needs a new paint job, and a new theme to go along with it is also really cool. Around this time, it was also announced that Mike Spanos, who was the current president of Six Flags, was going to be out and Salim Bazol, who is the current and new CEO of Six Flags, was coming in. He currently has quite the vision looking ahead for Six Flags, and I'm very excited to see what he has planned for the parks, but that was definitely major that happened at the end of 2021. Of course, following the bonus days is Holiday in the Park, which also returned with the drive through that came to the park in 2020 due to COVID, and it stuck around and remained very popular. They actually wound up expanding on the Holiday in the Park drive through by allowing you to walk through Merry Marketplace, which is pretty much the catering area which houses Santa Claus and the Holiday Feast, which was really cool just to be able to go in there, walk around. You could even bring your dog in there, which is just really, really cool and added to the experience big time. Around this time, it was also noticed that Batman the Ride was getting a repaint, which you can see here. It looks like it's getting more dark track, kind of more orange-like and really dark supports, almost black, which looks really good. Batman definitely could use a repaint. 
and this is exactly what the ride needs and I'm very excited to see its repaint complete this season. On top of that, to end off the season, we had Pin Palooza, which was great because we were able to get the pins from the member events that happened throughout the year that we missed, in addition to a couple of bonus ones like the El Toro one and the Jersey Devil 2021, which was really cool. We were lucky enough to get there first, so the event was really great. We got all the pins we wanted, and it was overall very well run. The season ended off with New Year's Eve fireworks, and of course, closing day was very early in January. We were there for both closing day and New Year's Eve, but that was pretty much it for the 2021 season. Obviously, there was a lot of stuff that happened between Power Hours, Jersey Devil, El Toro being closed at the beginning of the year, open for a little bit, then closed again. But overall, it was definitely one of the best seasons at the park, especially due to the fact that Jersey Devil was added to the park, which is easily one of the park's greatest new attractions. And I'm very, very excited to see what the 2022 season has in store for Six Flags Great Adventure. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope to see you all on April 2nd, which is Great Adventure's opening day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.